meeting. Um, we'll share this out with cons our constituents. So good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you all to coming today to uh, what's my 36th uh, online conversation with constituents. And I want to welcome uh, my colleague, uh, Rep. Lauren Carson. Uh, Lauren and I work, do a lot of work together in the community. And so I want to welcome all her constituents this morning. And we have with us our guest speaker is uh, Matthew Netto from the Rhode Island AARP. And we also have uh, Cheryl LeClaire from Rhode Island Department of Health uh, here to help us field questions um, that you all might have. Um, you know, the vaccine has been top of mind for seniors and um, uh, uh oh, the, she has no uh, sound. Um, Cheryl doesn't, so um, she's working remotely. So I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we will do our best. Perhaps we can use the chat a little bit more than we normally would. Um, so, Lauren, would do you have uh, comments, or should we pass it over to uh, Matthew? Uh, no, I don't have any comments. Excuse my crazy headband. It's my 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 headphones. So that's why I look like I'm. That's why I look like I'm skiing, <laughs> but I'm not. With a good um, snowy and, background. Yeah, well, back. that's a good point. I'm actually not skiing in in southern Utah. Um, uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. And uh, you know, uh, Terry and I have done many of these meetings together. I'm really happy to work so closely with her, and she invited me to join in today because I know that so many of us all have had dozens of questions about uh, the distribution of the vaccine. So. Um, you know, thank you for joining, and uh, we're looking forward to a productive conversation. Yes. So, with that, um, Matthew Netto from Rhode Island AARP. We're so glad to have you this morning. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, it's really it's an honor to be here and to, and to join in on this conversation. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to, out of your morning to uh, to join us today. And I'm sure you all have great, wonderful questions that uh, we'll do our best to see if we can get you some answers. Um, you know, very happy to have Cheryl here from the Department of Health. Um, you know, they have really been leading the charge, and 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 I think you know, doing a great job of of under great stress and turmoil, um, being able to to put all of this together and and, and make sure that we're able to able to get vaccinations to to our to our Rhode Island friends as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, so here at AARP Rhode Island, um, we've been closely monitoring uh, the vaccination rollout process as well as many other COVID related issues. Um, we are very, very pleased that, you know, in a, a couple of weeks ago, the reprioritization allowed for people 75 and older to start really getting vaccinated immediately. Uh, that was one of our major calls um, throughout the, the month of January was to really focus on, on people 50 and older, um, starting with 75 and older, to be able to get them vaccinations if, if they choose to, to, re to receive it as soon as possible. Um, so we're very, very pleased when, when the reprioritization occurred and now that it's going by, by age and some, some geographic, um, geographic parameters, um, we think that that's a really great advancement in, in our plan. And we think it's really started off you know, pretty well, uh, making sure that the most vulnerable um, uh, of us uh, are, are taken care of and having their needs met um, when it comes to getting vaccinations for COVID-19. Um, just some AARP stuff. Uh, we do have a page if any of you are looking for information on vaccinations, on COVID related stuff, or even entertainment while we're still kind of quasi locked down. Um, we have many virtual events. We have lots of resources, information on COVID uh, vaccines, nursing home work, stuff, other stuff we're doing around the state. Um, and that's at aarp.org slash ri. Or if you, you know, prefer to talk to someone in person and don't want to use the internet, um, you can call us anytime, 401-248-2663. Um, my email is m-n-e-t-t-o at aarp.org. I'll put this information in the chat for everybody Excellent. after. 
I am always here to answer questions. Um, if you have problems, anything concerning to you, whether it's COVID related or could be different, um, different issues. Right now, last night, we were testifying um, in the hopes of passing some legislation that would regulate the cost, uh, a cap on insulin um, for people with diabetes. Uh, also working on a few other parts of, you know, different pieces of legislation at the same time as doing some COVID work. Um, so it really is, uh, a, a, a very, very busy time for us, um, but we always make time for, for our fellow Rhode Islanders. So feel free to reach out to us at any point. Um, and I just wanna give a shout out really quick to my dear friend, Tia, who is, I see your little face there. Tia is um, a leader of our, our state legislative committee. Um, and you know, in the process of me coming to the AARP, one of my major initiatives is to really dive into local advocacy and find out what's going on in the local towns and cities throughout the state and seeing where the AARP can become a resource for everybody. Um, and, you know, Tia jumped right on board with me and has done an amazing job working with, with her local representatives and senators and keeping us up to date with exactly what's happening. And it's also set up so that if we have information that we need to disperse, um, Tia would be my go-to person for, uh, for the island down there. And she's, uh, she's doing a great job. So I'd like to thank all of you for your time again. And it's really an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, and thanks for joining. And I'm sorry to be a little distracted, but I'm trying to find the phone number for uh, Cheryl LeClaire so I can get her um, uh, to hey, call Cheryl. in. Cheryl, join. Thank audio. you. I got Excellent. in. Excellent. All right. Great. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm so glad to have you, Cheryl. Yeah, thank Welcome. you. Sorry, sorry about the rocky start. Sorry. I was looking for the phone number. <laughs> um, great. Um, so, um, uh, we've heard from Matt, and uh, so would you like to say a few words, Cheryl, about the where we are with the rollout process, and then we'll uh, take questions from people. Can you give well, us an overview? Uh, well, basically, um, it's rolling out as we've seen and you know mentioned publicly. Um, things do change every day. Um, we've um, publicly displayed and disseminated our uh, plan and we're still vaccinating the 75 year olds and we'll be moving down in age. Uh, the whole approach is really mostly based on like an age on down approach. So that's basically where we are. And as people says, have seen, there's been some you know, glitches and rocky starts and whatever, but we're working very, very uh, hard to um, address those issues and uh, smooth things out. So that's where we are with that. Right. So uh, can you talk about the CVS rollout? Um, people have, uh, and well, pharmacies may be at large because one uh, question I got or a comment, I guess I received from a few people is that uh, folks have been allowed to sign on to um, say a place in Fall River, which is very close to Portsmouth, but then they realize, you know, so they think they have an appointment and, but then they later realize that uh, you can't, uh, a Rhode Island resident can't get vaccinated in Massachusetts. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, I think. And then what, what we're seeing right now is a clarification of um, policies, even in Rhode Island in that area. In other words, Rhode Island residents are, to be vaccinated in Rhode Island. There's been some um, miscommunication, some confusion in that area, but um, basically that's uh, where our policy is. Like if you're in Rhode Island, I, we have a shortage. In other words, so Connecticut is not vaccinating Rhode Islanders. Massachusetts is not vaccinating Rhode Islanders and we're um, in pretty much the same situation policy-wise. And obviously Rhode Island, or Rhode Island is only vaccinating Rhode Islanders as well. Correct. Um, and so I guess the very big question of the day is when do we expect the supply to increase? Do you have any insight to that, Cheryl? No, no. <laughs> I mean, that's, I wish I did. I wish I had like a, a crystal ball, but I think that that's coming down from the federal level. But you do expect, we do expect that to happen. We hope so. Um, I always say, uh, I'll believe it when I see it kind of a thing. 
Um, in the meantime, we can hope that um, that that supply will increase. We keep hearing that the supply is going to increase, but until it's actually stocked on our shelves and in our borders, then that's when I will start believing it because um, you never really know. I mean, I can't make promises for the distribution that happens on a, on a level that's beyond our control, but uh, definitely we're all hopeful about that. And right now we're getting about 16,000 doses a week. Is that still the accurate number? I would have to double check that on you. Okay, okay. And so would you be able to give any clarity to how, that, how the vaccine is distributed around the state? Because that's another question that has come to me from constituents is, you know, how is, how is this being distributed? I can get back to you on that as well. Um, okay. Clarity. Okay. I'm writing all of this down. That's why I'm looking down. I don't okay. want to not um, paying okay. attention to you. <laughs> um, so does anybody, I, I'd like to open it up to the audience, I guess, that's with us. Um, if you can I, just, I oh, go ahead, her. Lauren, sure. Uh, I have a question and a comment. I want to make sure that we make time to have Carmela and Rich talk about what's happening on Aquidneck Island. So let's Absolutely. do that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but m one of my uh, questions, which I'm not clear about, and even this morning I saw a constituent was not clear, is that we have several different types of distribution sites. Like we have municipalities setting up distribution sites. We have CVS and Walmart setting up sites. We have one at Raytheon. Ha where do how do people know where to go like do i go to cbs and enroll or do i go to the city average people like myself and my constituents don't understand the distinction in the distribution sites and where so where should i direct people all right you know i understand in newport we have it set up and carmela can expand on this where uh the over the, the senior population i believe over 65 but maybe it's more going to the edward king house the city has a website. Uh, I don't know. Should I sign up at CVS too? I mean, I don't know. If I was 40, where would I sign up? So those are some of my questions from my constituents. I see Carmela has her hand up. On yes, it looks like Carmela's got some of the answers for us. And yes, and to the Portsmouth viewers, um, uh, it was just announced that Portsmouth will be yeah. opening up a MedPod site. We've all been sharing in Bristol and taking turns um, with our volunteers which i have been um participating as a volunteer and but now we're going to break down into individual towns and i think middletown and newport have joined forces and with that i'll hand it over to carmela <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I've had my coffee this morning, so if I talk really quickly, just slow me down. Um, indeed, uh, Newport and Middletown uh, are working together to uh, cover both communities. We're stronger together than we are apart. Uh, but with that, I, I, I want to begin with a note that attaches to that. There's some confusion in the community um, that the Middletown folks are afraid that the Newport folks are going to take some of their dosages and vice versa that will not happen. The, uh, each community has their own uh, number of dosages that are assigned to them at any given time. Um, so Newport will be making their appointments uh, based specifically on the number of dosages that they have. And Middletown will be making their appointments based specifically on the amount of dosages that have been allocated to them. There is no cross registration. We will not be begging or borrowing from Paul to pay Peter. Uh, none of that stuff uh, will be happening. So I just wanted to start uh, with that because that seems to have been a, a bone of contention and things that we were hearing about in the past couple of days. Um, both Middletown, New, actually all three, Middletown, Newport, and Portsmouth, and our, our friends from Portsmouth, if you want to uh, correct me if I'm wrong, all three of us have an info line um, that is set up. So for uh, the city of Newport, it is the Edward King House number, 401-846-7426, extension one, and I'll put these in the chat. Um, so that you have it for all three communities. Uh, for the town of Middletown, it's their EOC, whose number I do not have memorized, I apologize, but I'll make sure to get it in the chat as we keep talking. 
And then Portsmouth also has an info line that uh, you can contact for information. Now, all three of the communities are doing the best that we can to ensure that we have the most up-to-date contact information on all of the folks uh, in our community, age 75 plus, and then 65 to 74, and so on, based on age. No matter how old you are, you can call any one of our info lines, and we're happy to give you uh, the answers to the questions you may have to the best of our ability for the time in which we have answered the question. Please understand that this is a moving target and there are a lot of spinning plates that are, are going on at any given time. So the information tends to change on a regular basis. We are keeping up with it um, as best we can. We've been really good at it so far, I have to say. Um, so we can give you the most up-to-date information. So for example, if a resident of Newport contacts the info line through us and they wanna know the different ways that um, they can get their vaccination, we will share with them whatever it is that is available at any given time and what's coming down the pike as well, based on whatever it is Dr. Scott has put forth from the Department of Health. So right now, what we have available to us is the uh, what we call the community pod or the meds pods. Uh, and for Newport and Middletown, that will be located at the CCRI Newport campus uh, here on the island. Um, we are generating a random list of, uh, meaning that their names will be put in randomly, age 75 plus. And when it comes time to start making those appointments, we'll be contacting them directly, both Newport and Middletown, in order to help them to get not only their first appointment, but their first and second dosage appointment. Um, again, that's a random list. Now, um, Matthew, thank you for posting that. I appreciate it. Um, I was looking forward to Matthew. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Great. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you I got a database. I've been keeping team. track of a database. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, indeed, um, uh, we're going to be assisting folks by doing that. Portsmouth, they do something a little bit different. So, you know, we'll certainly give them the opportunity to chat about that. Uh, momentarily. Um, so uh, the city of Newport on their website at cityofnewport.com backslash vaccine has what's called a pre-sign list. That pre-sign opportunity it is, is only intended to give us an opportunity to have most up-to-date contact information on folks uh, based on their age. It also gives us a chance to have folks sign up so that in the event that they don't show up on the 50,000 lists we have you know, uh, citywide, um, that uh, we don't lose them. So indeed that they're placed, um, they, they show up on our radar. Um, and, and Middletown is doing the same thing. I'm certain that Portsmouth will be doing uh, the same as well with the, uh, the list that they are creating as well. These lists are not intended to give them an appointment. It's just intended to keep them on the radar so that they get on that random list for us to call and make the appointment. That's one way. The other oh, way, is that for any age, Carmela? Any age person? You know, we're taking them for any age because I think it just makes the the, uh, the community feel better to know that they show up somewhere. <clears throat> but certainly, we are specifically honing in on seventy five plus and sixty five yeah. to seventy four. Um, but you know, we've got kids on the list, and and we're not uh, we're not taking them off just because they're kids. Um, okay. Oh, uh, you know, indeed, we we will take them all. And if I get, you know, uh, 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 Jamestown, which I have, uh, Jamestown or Portsmouth folks, we know where to send that information. So when we get it, we'll be uh, sending that off to the uh, the townships that they've been signing up. Um, but specifically, the the Newport uh, city of Newport piece is intended for Newport residents. The town of Middletown also has a pre-sign list. MiddletownRI.com. Uh, it shows up right on there. The link for it shows up right on their homepage to click that. And then Portsmouth does a really great job with their EOC, um, meaning uh, Emergency Operations Center, I apologize, um, website as well to click on theirs as well at, uh, at Portsmouth RI. Okay, so we have a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, Carmela or, uh, or Cheryl, whoever, would like to answer this, and, and I think I know the answer, but I'll defer to you all. Um, are the towns paying for vaccines? They are not, right? The towns don't have to buy vaccines. This no. is coming, This nobody's no. paying, right? Right. It's coming yeah. from the federal government. Yes. 
Yeah, the towns from the latest information I have seen, <clears throat> I think it's for the next four weeks, the towns and cities will receive 7,000 doses that will be divided up amongst the towns and cities based off of um, population numbers and demographic numbers of you know, how many people are in that demographic we're trying to reach at that point. Okay. Um, that's my latest understanding of it. And uh, Carmelo, just for um, uh, Rich Dolipsky, I had asked him to join us from Portsmouth, but he's actually at the Raytheon building this morning, um, getting that ready. So um, I, he's not able to log on. So we're gonna be we're gonna be getting as much information from you, I think, this morning. Okay. So I'm so glad you're here. But uh, approximately, um, how many doses have has Newport? for instance, been seeing on a weekly basis. It's, uh, it's my sense Portsmouth is about 140. Is that kind of in line that, with what yeah. you're seeing? Yeah, it's in the it's in the ballpark. Certainly, we don't open our first um, uh, uh, meds pods or community vaccination clinic until February 19th. That will be our first one at CCRI. Um, and and you're right that that's about the. Uh, the the number of dosages per community I, I think it's a it's all based on population so um the they've divided up the pie based on the population of your your city or township right right thanks I, and i have seen a list of dates come out for the last night for the raytheon um site and it's going to be i think it was wednesday mornings primarily um, the way Portsmouth will be doing it. And the dates that I saw last night were running out from uh, the end of February towards all through March into April and uh, Wednesday mornings, I think from nine to 12 or nine to one was were the hours that I'm expecting that we're gonna have the Raytheon facility running based on the volunteer schedule that I saw last night. So our are the people in Portsmouth, are they signing up at the senior center, I understand, that we have in Portsmouth? Uh, there is an email address that I was just getting ready to type into the chat, and it Sorry, is... Yeah. I was there yesterday, and the, the phones were going crazy when I talked to some of the people there. So I thought I'd be sure. That is not what the uh, website says. So I'm sure that the senior center is trying to help um, capture as many, like Carmilla said, we're trying to make sure nobody falls through the cracks. Sure. So I'm sure they're taking names. And they are, um, yeah. But we're the official that. way for Portsmouth is to send an email to vaccine at PortsmouthRI dot com and that's um how they are they're capturing and they're also using lists from the senior center from the voter um for, from voter registration lists um um so a myriad of sources uh they, like you just mentioned of lists so they're trying just to, to make sure that um nobody uh falls through the cracks that wants a vaccine great Okay. Representative, I'd like to um, go back to Representative Carson, circle back to her question about the three different types of ways that you sure. can get vaccinated in Rhode Island. Um, so for, for people that were on a, that haven't seen the latest, um, there, are, there are three different ways. There are going to be your local and regional pod structures, like we're talking about with the local information. Then there will be CVS and Walgreens will be doing it throughout the state. Now, from what I understand, it's not at all locations of CVS and Walgreens at this point. I believe they're working towards more, but at this point, it's not all of them, but you can go online to their website or call your, call your local store and, and, and find out the registration New, process there. Newport is one Newport on the is island. One of them. Yeah, okay. right. yeah. I know they, they think they started yes. with four at CVS, but, and then the newest one that isn't open yet, they're saying it should be open in the next few weeks, are state run facilities. And they're calling these kind of mass vaccination sites where the whole goal of these will be to get as many people in and out the door vaccinated as possible as quickly and efficiently as they can. Um, that will consist of one statewide phone number and a uh, one website where you can go either call to make your, your, your reservation or you can go uh, to the state website to do it. So there are three different ways to get it. You know, and that's where I believe the confusion is setting in. As you said, Representative Carson, where where, where do I start? Where do I go? I think right, it, right. I, I think it has to come down to your preferences a little bit. And honestly, 
I would try all three. And if you're eager to get it, the quicker you can get it, the better. And if you can get one at one of the spots before another spot, go for it. The only thing I think where we could get in trouble here is if you register for all three and then you get one earlier and don't go back and, and, and cancel your other reservations. Um, if you're gonna make multiple reservations, please, please, please go back to the ones that you're not gonna use and delete those reservations so that spot, spot can come up available for the next person that wants it. Um, does anyone, say, I, 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 I am not a medical expert. I'm paying attention as much as I can to everything throughout Likewise. the state. I, I think I have that correct, but if anyone has a correction you for me, please. Matthew, well done. <laughs> yes. Thank so, you. Um, Carmela and and Matthew, um, when I was volunteering um, last week, and people were getting their first dose up in Bristol, the day I saw you there, Carmela. Actually, I think <laughs> we were, right, saw Terry. each other coming and going, um, and uh, we were setting people up for their second dose at that time. So that is something you all, when you make your first dose, make sure you understand when you're supposed to get your second dose as well. And I don't know exactly. And that will, that will happen as part of protocol, uh, Terry. So if, um, if you're going, um, if, at least for the community pods, I can speak specifically with regards to that. Uh, you won't leave after getting your first dose without your second uh, dose already um, scheduled for you. And I think that's part of the, um, the communication piece as well to let folks know that um, this is not uh, uh, an appointment with your hairdresser. <laughs> right. So when we give you your appointment, um, you really need to base your schedule around the appointment and not the other way around. Um, so it's, it's really important that we keep within the time frame, and that uh, if you receive uh, a Moderna, for example, example vaccine, your second dosage must be Moderna. Right. If it's Pfizer, it must be Pfizer. Um, and generally speaking, you'll very likely go back to the same place you got the first one. So for the folks who got it in Bristol in that first turnaround, they'll be going back to Bristol for the second dosage. That's a question I had. Thank you. No. <laughs> um, Mary, Bonnie has a, Bonnie has yes, a question. Yes, I see. Bo I saw yes. her and I was going to go to her next. Yes, go Thank ahead. You. Thank you, Representative. Um, I just have a general question. I'm not sure who can answer it. I was dismayed when I saw that the city of Newport started with the voter list because we know that the brown and black population, population and undocumented workers are the most vulnerable and then they put us at risk. I was told by the mayor to, uh, or I'm sorry, I was told by Tom Shevlin to address it individually. So I'm supposed to go to my gardener who's from Guatemala. I, I live in a condominium building of five units and I'm the president of the association. So I have some responsibility to make sure this building is safe. My gardener's from Guatemala, five of them. My housekeeper is from Puerto Rico. My, uh, uh, I, I could go on, several people who help us with the building are from overseas. Some of them are citizens. Some of them have uh, their papers. I imagine that there are some that don't, especially with the gardener's group because they really don't speak a word of English. What will be, address, what will be done to address the most vulnerable in our cities because they really, I'm not worried about myself. I'm 66, I have three of the four or five pre-existing conditions, but I have excellent health care and I have insurance and I live well, I eat well. What about the people who can't afford to do that? Thank you. Okay, may I chime in Go on ahead. that? Please, okay. so, please, because um, I don't have an answer for yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Bonnie. So when we say that we started with the voter rolls, that's where we started. It was not the, the only uh, list. Uh, when I talk about 17 different lists, I mean that there are 17 different lists. So we have a, a fantastic partnership. Newport is very lucky to have the Newport uh, Partnership for Families. Um, where I think there's over 62 different not-for-profits are all working in, in concert. Um, uh, and this is one of the opportunities for us to work in concert. So we started with the voter list because it was the first one, it's public, it's the first one we got to work with. Um, but then we've layered on top of that, um, working with our, our partner sites to target exactly the folks that you're talking about, Bonnie. So we're working with the HES, we're working with the Martin Luther King Community Center. 
Um, we're working with Conexión Latina. We're working with uh, the school department. We're working with everybody and anybody we could possibly think of um, in order to connect to uh, find the folks that we um, that we need to target uh, with regards to the vaccination. So I don't want anyone to think that, you know, it's only going by the voter rolls and uh, that's it. It was just the first place to start. Now, what Tom was telling you um, is actually correct as well, because we're, again, we're only as strong as the team that comes together um, to help with those folks. So Bonnie, if you have a list of folks that um, you know uh, are interested in having the vaccine, and especially right now fit the criteria of 75 plus, get onto that, uh, uh, the website or call us at the info line and we'll help to get those folks on the list so that we don't lose them. So we need the community to help too, um, because there's only so many lists, you know, when all is said and done. And then there are folks that are transient, you know, they they just moved to the area a year ago, or, um, you know, they've only been here for so long. And so indeed, um, maps do matter uh, when all is said and done, because you, you, you have to <laughs> Uh, either in the state that you reside in or in the community you reside in, depending on which um, which one of those uh, uh, pods you want to connect to in order to get your vaccine. Does that help? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Yeah, thank you, Carmela. The, the, just an add on. Um, so the, the age cutoff is kind of arbitrary because I could be 55 and have diabetes. And when you have diabetes, you often have heart condition, you know, so are the medical conditions of people, I know that makes it really complicated. It does. But is there any way to do that? Yeah. So um, I, I don't know of anybody that wants to play Abraham at this point. So the end, <laughs> um, what happens is the reason that the, the cutoff is uh, with regards to age and remember to too. We're not going to finish one category and then start the next one. We're going to start the first one and then get moving on to the next cohort. Um, just about everybody over the age of 75 has comorbidities. Yeah. We have yet to find one individual who does not have at least one comorbidity. Um, and so there's no way of choosing, you know, one over the other. So um, by, again, you know, when we talk about equity, we're, we're, we're utilizing the tools that we have in front of us to keep as even of a playing field as possible. Yes. So uh, yeah. by working Thank with uh, 75 plus is the first cohort and then 65 to 74 is the next cohort. Um, and it's all predicated on the amount of vaccine we get, my friends. Yeah. So, Great. you know, when you have, I have a question, we, we've so, got, um, We've got quite a few people. I have two people with raised hands. We've got Susan and Sharon, and we have Mr. iPad, whose name I, sorry, I forget your name. Right. So, um, yeah. so we will get to all three of you. And um, I also have questions in the chat about like what day CVS people have been attempting yeah. to sign up for CVS and are having difficulty yeah. with that. Representative, so, um, one thing on the comorbidity, um, it is my understanding that, it, it, you know, 75 and older goes in, in that age range, 65 and older. The next demographic, if you look at it, I believe is 60 to 64. And that's where anyone under the age of 60 that has comorbidities is going to be, become eligible for vaccination. So if you're 30 years old with, with comorbidities or 40 with comorbidities, um, Dr. It, it, it looks like 60 to six when, when they hit the 60 to 64 age bracket, that's what my understanding is you will then become eligible. That's so right, yeah. Matthew, well done again. <laughs> All right, great, excellent. So um, I, I have three people in the upper, my upper left-hand screen with their hands raised. Um, Susan, I think you were the first and then we'll go to uh, John, is that right? John, yes, I bet. Yes. And then we'll go to Sharon. Thank you, so, Terry. Um, you just answered my question. Okay. If, if you're not in the above 65 and you have two cor comorbidity. So thank you very much for that. I took my hand down. Oh, okay. Okay. So John, you've got the floor. Yeah, I, I, I have lots of questions. I, <clears throat> I, I would make a point though. I, I, the anecdotal evidence tells me, I, I have a friend in North Kingstown um, <clears throat> who tells me the CVS system is just flat not working for him. He's 80 years old. Uh, no questions on eligibility. Uh, he went to Walgreens and got the Fall River treatment, and he, and he wasn't sure about that, so he called the Walgreens that they assigned him to in Fall River, and they said, no, only Massachusetts residents. I, I, I could spend the whole time that you have available today, Rep. Cortreen, 
uh, <laughs> complaining. Okay. Um, and I think that, that nobody, this is, this is even my editorial, then I have a question. Nobody out there in, in, in government uh, or in places like the AARP uh, should fail to understand how confusing it is uh, to people. Uh, I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy, you know, all this stuff, successful, whatever. Uh, and I, I can't, th this is just a morass of, of information and contradicting information and, and suggestions to do things that can't be followed up on. I mean, it's a bloody nightmare, okay? And I'm, I'm you know, and so I don't know, I witnessed the lady that talked about the, the, the underrepresented and the, and, the, and the more vulnerable. I mean, I don't know how they begin to, to do that and what society's obligation to them is. It's a mess, okay? And there's a lot of angry people out there. I'm angry, okay? I'm trying to be constructive, but I'm angry. Um, I'm, I have a, a number of comorbidities. Um, we've got a number of things on our plate as, as a family. It's you know, charity begins at home that we're trying to deal with. Uh, and I just, I, I, to not even have a clue when I might get vaccinated, uh, I can't get on an airplane. I can't do anything, the things I need to do. Um, and it's exceedingly frustrating. So you, you need to, you need to be in touch with that issue, and and the, and the higher up in government you can go to present a, a, a cogent message, uh, is absolutely critical. Because otherwise, it's just it's just a cacophony. Okay, and so I guess I'm a little bit concerned. I have one question of I guess it's Matt. Um, I, I was led to understand by again by the Providence Journal and the bits and pieces that you can find when when they do articles that sixteen thousand a week, and and I was absolutely stunned to see Portsmouth get one hundred and forty a week. That means, uh, and I'm in the six, I'm in the next cadre down. Uh, I'm, I'm 74 and a half, <laughs> um, and uh, that would be that would be 50 weeks on a two dose basis before I would get a shot. Um, that that doesn't make people feel very good, because it doesn't seem like there's anything. Who's in who's in charge? So I, I, messages about that couldn't be answered today about when the more vaccine is going to come, how much is going to come. Uh, you 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 want to give some people hope these the people who are frustrated what i mean what, 50 weeks is ridiculous you might as well not have a program okay? well you know i completely agree with you it is completely frustrating it is completely confusing um i pretty much for a job all day long now I try to keep track of this stuff and it is even <laughs> difficult for for me Crazy. Um, not, I'm not going to lie to you. No, it, it is very confusing and very frustrating. And that's why from, you know, once reprioritization happened, AARP is a big proponent of having one centralized phone number and one centralized website that would work kind of like a, a 911 type unit where you call one number and, you, and it dispatches you to where your local town authorities are to get to get your, your vaccination done. But none of it's going to matter unless we can increase the supply of vaccines. Right. We can make plan after plan after plan. But if if we don't get them coming in is not much we can do the, i think there is hope for the future especially with the johnson and johnson vaccine but hopefully we'll have its its emergency use authorization by the end of the month um they're being they're they're telling us they're going to be able to hit the ground running so if we add in a, a third vaccine that you know gets a couple million productions out of that we obviously would be able to increase increase our distribution here in the state um so i completely understand your, your frustrations right now aarp rhode island um on our website uh you can sign up to send letters to your local state reps and senators urging them urging them to to join 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 this this what we're talking about right now and help push for for more vaccinations if possible and also a, a streamlined system that is less confusing and less cumbersome for 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 many of us um so, so I, I i really really appreciate your, your sentiments and understand your frustrations so, so matt my question finally i did the editorial the question you mentioned in, in the beginning of your piece about seven thousand doses yes. and I, I, I am a numbers guy and immediately i saw that i said that's that's less than half of the sixteen thousand. i was led to believe what is it what are you telling us we're going to get 50 doses for portsmouth next next week or uh, instead of 140? No, I, what's, I, what's the number? I think our 140 is coming out of that 7,000. Yes. Um, and Not the 16,000 that Rhode Island gets. Yeah. No, but where's well, the other? Yeah, where's the other half um, approximately? If if 7,000 are coming down to the med pods, mm -hmm. is the rest is the other part going to the CVSs and the Walgreens? And still, are we are we done with nursing homes? Or are we still have that program operational. 
it is my understanding that we are still finishing up with phase one, which includes a lot of frontline workers, uh, nursing home and assisted living facilities, all getting their second shots. Um, so that's where the other portion of, of vaccine. So we get 16,000 in the state, 7,000 is being distributed, allotted for towns and cities. Um, and my, you know, my understanding is the rest of it is um, helping to wrap up phase one, finish off nursing homes, assisted living facilities, frontline workers. Um, and then I'm sure when the state mass vaccination sites go live, a portion will be going to them as well. Um, okay, thank you. Can we uh, John, can I move over to Sharon? Um, yes, I'm done. Had, Thank you. She's, you're welcome. I, I, she's didn't, I her... didn't warn you about my editorial. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. So Sharon, you have the floor. Okay, thanks. Um, I actually, um, I, I, I sent my question through via chat as well, but I was reading in the New York Times today how Rhode Island is amongst the worst states in terms of the percentage of the eligible populations who have been vaccinated and also in terms of the amount of supply that has gone into people's arms. And I would like a better understanding of way, what's going on statewide in Rhode Island that we're, we were among the best in terms of testing and now we're falling to the bottom. So I don't know who can speak to this, but I, I think it's an important question. Hi, this is um, Cheryl LeClaire. I can't really answer that question right now. I mean, I've been asked, I just wanted to clarify my role in this uh, meeting. I was asked to fill in for Neil Heighton and he is away for three days. So I'm looking at my role. I'm not an expert or on top of all of these issues. I wanna be upfront and clear with you. I usually do other kind of um, more specialized work related to uh, vaccines. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not as familiar with the bigger picture kind of things. But I've taken down all of these questions and I will be sure to get back to this group formally and in writing with the answers to the questions that I'm seeing coming across, if that's all right with people. Sure, and I, I have everybody's email address. So if you send it to Rep Carson and I, we can disseminate it to all the constituents and probably to a larger audience. Um, right. That would I, be I, greatly appreciated. And right. I'd, get I'd rather get staff involved with this to answer some of these questions. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we get the governor's staff to get involved with this and answer like which that governor question? <laughs> yeah, which governor? let me let me take a crack at that, Sharon. Sure. There's a okay. couple things I want to say. The first thing is that um, I want everybody on this call to know that Terry and I, as well as the other 73 members of the House and Representatives and the Senate, are calling the Department of Health all the time because we don't have any vaccine and we don't have the authority to get it into your arm. But we do know that this is like the number one issue we're hearing every single day, including Saturdays and Sundays. So we are clamoring about this. Uh, the second thing I wanna say is that I think I, I don't, I, I'm not defending the way this is going. I wanna make that clear. I know this, I'm over 65, I'm frustrated too. Okay, I'm waiting for my vaccine. Um, but there is conflicting information out there. And to Sharon's point, I saw an article last week that if you looked at the percentage of populations that have been vaccinated state by state, we were right at the average. And I was shocked when I saw that. I thought we would fall way below. And it was a complete list of all the states showing how many had been vaccinated. And we were like right in the average. And there were a lot below us and there were some above us. So I, I don't really, the, the, the facts are changing so quickly. And the vaccinations are going out so quickly that I've come to think that sometimes that information is not really accurate. So uh, it's, it's just as inaccurate as the inaccuracy of where we get our shots. Okay, so I'm not defending it. I'm just telling you that I've been confused and I've seen some information that says it's not as bad as we think it is. And it should be better. I want to make that clear. Right. The other thing that I really want to ask, which is really a question as a state legislator to Carmela, and I think Terry may want this answer. Carmela, you have a lot of information about, and it's great information, and you're very well organized as usual, and thank you for your service to Aquidneck Island. Who's giving you this information? Where are you getting all this information? These are the, and you too, Matt, where, where are you getting it from? Because I'm really trying to track the communication, how it's working. Matt, do you want to start? Oh, um, 
I'm, I, I read every article I can possibly yeah. find. I, per, per, I, I, I spend a lot of time on websites, pulling data and, and whatnot from there. It is not an easy task. It no. is not an easy task to stay, stay on top of this, to be completely honest with you. Um, it, but it, it, I, can, I can shoot off some resources. Um, a lot of it is, is, is paying attention to local media, a lot of print media, a lot of radio, um, and, and, and as well as tuning into every single press conference and listening on Friday mornings at 7.30 a.m., the state holds their vaccine work group. And it is open to the public and anyone can join in, anyone can watch and listen. And that's when they talk about reprioritization and planning. And once again, they don't have all the answers, but they're an advisory group and they're, they're, they're putting together the best recommendations they can. And there is an opportunity sometimes at the end of the meeting to give public comment and ask questions. Um, so I would say that that is a very good uh, a place to start if you want kind of live time information is if you have availability and you like Zoom meetings, jump on 730 in the morning on Friday mornings um, and you get a lot of information there as well. Um, and also, you know, um, you know, keeping on top of the Department of Health website and other state uh, state run websites and piecing it all together. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Carmela, you're getting very specific directions on exactly what to do on the ground. Who's, who's, who's providing you with this? So remember that I am the volunteer coordinator for my um, uh, my area. So uh, I'm working with emergency management. My uh, information is coming from, um, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm a New York Times subscriber myself, but I don't pay attention to the New York Times, nor do I pay attention to any other media outlet that is not c coming directly from our, our, our local area. Um, because they're, they're out to sell papers. So they don't care what's happening in Newport, Rhode Island or Middletown or Portsmouth for that matter. Um, so my information is coming directly by, uh, from whatever's coming out of the city of Newport. Um, it's coming out of the emergency management team, uh, which is working with regards to meds pods. That's what we are trained for. Um, okay. And uh, it's coming directly out of the Department of Health. And if it doesn't come out of any of those places, then I'm taking it with a grain of salt. Right. Okay, I just wanted to understand if I wanted to go in and dig up how effective that communication is down to the local people, who's, where you're getting it from. That's yeah. helpful, thank you. I, did, I didn't realize to what extent Rima was involved, um, but yeah. Okay, and this is, um, Cheryl. This go is um, Cheryl again. I just wanted to make sure it's um, also not that I'm um, stalling and getting back to you or not being committal or giving you answers. I hope that you understand that today. It's like, because of all of the information and miscommunication and all of that, uh, the Department of Health has a very careful structure, whereas like we do double check what we tell people to make sure it's accurate. Things are changing by the moment, as everyone knows. So I could tell you something today that may already be changed and I'm not aware of it because I haven't checked back with you know, the people that are um, more intimately involved with uh, vaccinations than I am. So this is why I wanted to collect the questions and get back to you officially and in writing, because that way there, I want you to have the confidence that it actually has a, an official stamp of approval on it, rather than something that Cheryl LeClaire said one day, one morning, you know, best of her knowledge. Um, so that's um, the reason for me um, wanting to get back to you in writing. Thank you. I think Thank it's you, the responsible Sarah. thing to do. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other hands, but I have. I, I have one to... more question. Oh, sure. Go before ahead. Before we ring, before we ring off, uh, Rep. Corkveen, could you sure. uh, confirm to people how people who want, may want to see this um, very helpful uh, webinar, you might say, how how we get access to it? It's going to be taped, but what, what's it's the access point? Going to be taped. I have a YouTube channel, so I will. It will be there. I'll put it out on my Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to share it with Lauren. I'm sure she'll put it out on her Facebook page. Page. Um, my web page will have a link to it I as well. All that same for me. My yeah. Facebook page, my web page. I'll send it to my It might take me a couple days to get all that done, but I, it will make it there. So speaking for my cohort, I don't do Facebook or any social media, so I guess it's YouTube would be the place to go. Yes. Your, yes. On your site. Yeah. I have, a, um, th this is Cheryl, I have a, a question, if I sure. may, um, before sure. we depart. I'm going to come up with the list of questions that I believe I heard today, and I'd like to run them by you in advance to make sure that they are in fact correct and I captured them accurately. 
And then at that point, I will work on getting the formal answers, respond formally. And um, how would the people uh, find out or how would they have access to that? Would you also post that at that point? Sure, um, I can I can post your responses on great. social media. And I have a I have a newsletter. And um, uh, if people reach out to me, I usually add them into my newsletter because I feel like they're interested of the topic of the day. And so I will, when you send me those responses, I'm sure I will include those in a news blast out to my constituents. So uh, people such as John, I think I have put you on that list. So you'll get an email from me. Um, you can you can unsubscribe if you don't want to listen, but um, I will be sharing it out that way as well. Terry, you have yeah. the emails of everybody on this call, right? I do. Yes, and that's you what I was send saying. It out that we way, can, the most we can yes. specifically email this group that's here with us because yes, I have a list um, of all of you here. And um, uh, before we depart, I know that Vin has um, he has a question um, or a comment that he would like to make, and I think. Ben, you're from the, the state AARP. I recognize your hat. I know I've seen you around the state house when we used to be there. You have the floor. Thank, thank you, Representative, uh, and also Rep uh, Carson. Uh, and yes, I served as the AARP president in, uh, when was it? 2019. <laughs> and still an active uh, member. But um, I recently transmitted a request to Representative Raymond Hall asking that um, there be a task force meeting to um, uh, bring before the task force in a public uh, session, uh, health department and uh, officials, as well as the governor's office, department of administration, to really discuss this issue about having a centralized uh, phone number. Um, the current forums and methods of the vaccination work group on Friday mornings is really a charade. The public comment item on the agenda is never complied with or fulfilled. Um, and, and so there, there's really controlled and or limited access to the health department officials to have a, a, a significant uh, engaged conversation. I think the only way we're really gonna get answers is by ha having the oversight committee or the task force bring the health department officials uh, before uh, before that body and, and really get into this issue. And I'm sure most of you received this mailer, which was a disgrace. They spent thousands of dollars on this uh, colorful, enormous mailer that reminded me of the game Shoots and Ladders, which has no 900 number. And you're supposed to go through this maze and understand that you're on standby until they decide that they're gonna have another contract to pay thousands of dollars. This is wasteful public spending from the federal, paid for by the federal government, but by you and I. So whatever is going on in the executive branch is out of control. And I really believe that the legislative branch needs to insert itself in, in, a, in a more aggressive and over, oversight manner. So whatever you can do to get Representative Hull or a Representative Serpa in, uh, with her committee to have a full court press with the health department and the governor's office about what is going on here because every day it's a different glitch or story, and we're tired of it. And, and to not bring in AARP in a more significant way. I asked Kathleen Connell if she's ever been contacted by the governor since the start of the pandemic. Never happened. It's a disgrace. So, you know, where, where the governor and the health department is collaborating in order to address the needs of the older adults in Rhode Island is a mystery. And, and to not engage AARP and other aging groups in the communication and the strategizing of how we will address the most vulnerable population is just mind boggling. So however you can help 
uh, Representative uh, uh, Carson and Terry appreciate it because the the older population is helpless and 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 there's there's no means of intervention or remedy that's for this true. right now. I I'm sorry, that's not. <laughs> Thank you, Vin. Thank you. Thank you, Vin. Thank you. I think that Terry and I will talk to both Pat and uh, uh, for the, right. the people on the call, uh, Representative Serp is the chair of the House Oversight Committee and Representative Hull has been leading a task force that was appointed in the House right. on the vaccine. And, and, he's right, and they have not met in a while. And Lauren and I both sit on the Oversight Committee. So we can we can bring that to Chairwoman Serpa. But go ahead, Bonnie. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I started to type something in chat, but uh, then uh, I'm about as computer illiterate as you can get. <laughs> and my ex, Hank Nistern, called me up and said, get the app, crush COVID. So last June, I got the app. I have been tested every three or four weeks. I have had lots of communiques from the governor's office. I think that we all have a certain responsibility to learn the technology. This brochure that I received yesterday is fantastic. It reminds people to wear a mask, get tested off and gives you the website, keep six feet distance. It's in several languages, which we really needed in this community. So I'm not yelling at you, Vin, but I wish really that you would try yourself Call me up. I'll give you my phone number by chat. Respectfully, sure. Bonnie, I, I, I serve on the front line with the Medical Reserve Corps. There are thousands of individuals in public housing that are isolated, helpless, and worried, and, and, and are, are in despair. There is no organized outreach to the folks in public housing, the individuals on the special needs registry at the Department of Health. There are many, many needy individuals, and there is no game plan or strategy to reach out and assist those people. And keep in mind that the Department of Health issued a draft vaccination plan in October, and now where it is is a mystery as, as to whether it's being utilized uh, okay. amended I, I, or ben, whatever. I, I agree with you. I understand your frustration. It's understandable for that narrow issue, but don't take everything and take everything the state is doing and trash it oh, because listen, of the Bonnie, difficulty Bonnie. of acquire of, uh, of respectfully uh, Bonnie, of the governing the governing at this point is completely out of control. We they're, they're, we are leaderless. The lieutenant governor. We have a transition. We have oh, please, a transition. Bonnie, we have great the, representatives. Bonnie, I'll, I'll, respectfully. I'll mute Bonnie, respectfully, the lieutenant governor has not been purposed or charged to utilize the emergency management advisory council that he chairs in order to better strategize and utilize the assets in public and private sector to, to, to have a stronger response. Keep in mind, he also chairs the long-term coordinating committee that oversees the nursing homes. He, he has not been brought into, we are not at full best execution. That that's my point. And, and, to, and to accept or think otherwise, it, we're being naive. Thanks, I'm sorry. We, we Rep. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sure where, where I am in the queue. Uh, I can't see the full queue. Okay. Um, it, 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 I think the, one of the central things that I've taken from this is it all starts with vaccine uh, access. Yes. Okay. And, and there is anecdotal evidence, but, they, but I know the state of Michigan was uh, broadly... Uh, 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 categorized as having gone directly to the providers um, uh, when, when the, because they were having the same kinds of issues where we are to say, how do we get more vaccine? We have a budget for it. How do we do it? I mean, and, and, I, and I, I wonder, is there any, again, we, the transition is unfortunate. Uh, that's about the best I can describe. But is there anybody in this state at the senior levels that is considering trying to find out why our uh, allocation is so meager and who, who sets our allocation? Uh, is, is anybody trying to get more vaccine on behalf of the citizens of Rhode Island since we're pot bound to be only served here and not in Massachusetts and not in Connecticut? I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm, in, I'm in the Yale New Haven system. I, I had appointments ready to go. And then they said, oh, I'm sorry. Yesterday you could come in, today you can't. I mean, Matthew. it's crazy, but they're, but they're vaccinating people and they've got a, a sign up page. It, I, I just can't tell you how frustrated your, your citizens are. 
I, it, it I starts just, with getting, it starts I, with getting more got, vaccines. We got it. I got two loud and clear. while we're on this call asking for vaccines. So yes. I, my phone rings yeah, constantly. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I realize you, I wouldn't want to be in your position. Thank you I for mean, doing this. And that's really why I wanted to just have yeah. this conversation. Yeah. Um, Matt, do you have any insight from your or Carmela as to you know going up from the state to the federal level what the communication chain is there um uh I, maybe cheryl will be able to get back to us in writing with um a response to that question but that i i feel like a lot of these um frustrations would be um ameliorated if we had if there was more vaccine in the supply chain um and and then yeah, we that would be a quality each. problem if we had more yeah. vaccine and had a struggle to then get we it would not That's be scrambling problem. over this you know 140 doses per town um you know i i do know from my colleagues in washington that our national office is is heavily focused on on advocating for more vaccines and for the release of more vaccines and um, you know, to institute the, the Defense Production Act, which was uh, put into effect a few weeks ago to make sure that we have the most resources possible being produced and, and getting out to the states. Um, I don't have any specific info. I, I just do know that our, our national office of AARP is very active in advocating for the increased uh, increased volume of, of vaccinations, increased production and increased distribution to the states. Um, if I have any more information that comes down, um, I, I can check, double check to see if there's anything specific information I can get on that from my national office. And if I, if I do, I will send it to you, uh, Representative, and you can just um, disperse it to the- Excellent. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I would like any on supply, any place I can get it. Yes. I'm a bottom line kind of guy. And the one thing I didn't walk away from this meeting with is just where do we stand statewide in terms of the number of doses and those uh, people who are over 75, when is that going to be completed? We don't have any specifics. And for the town of Portsmouth, I would say the same thing. What's the number on the list and how many vaccines we're getting, which here's- uh, About 140 a week yeah, is what but, is coming through. What's the number? Maybe 25% are not going to get the vaccine. Where do we stand in Portsmouth in terms of given the current supply, where right. are we going to, where and how will it be determined on who gets it next? I believe uh, it's like first come first serve as to those med pods, um, and um, we have we don't we have not up right now because we've been dealing with first responders. There has not been a sign up protocol, but I'll make an effort, Rich, to uh, find out exactly what. The next step is with the opening of the Raytheon building. Um, I know I'm participating in a training, I think next week, and um, and I've been invited over there to the Raytheon building. So um, I, I will make an effort to find out an answer to that question. But the hundred, the doses, as everybody here has shared, that I'm probably not going to have an answer to. But the specific of how you you know, how you get in line and how we're um, developing who's going to get the the next 140 doses, for instance. Where, where are the quantities that the pharmacies are uh, giving? How do they get that allocation? Is that an addition? That's, no, I think that's the other part of the 16, you know, the 7,000 that Matt talked about that is going to cities and towns. That's what's ending up in the med pods that Carmela's organizing in Newport and Middletown and that we are going to have at Raytheon in Portsmouth. But um, I, pharmacies I, get their inventory. I think they're the other part of the 16,000 coming into the state, correct, Matthew? My understanding, yes. So do we well, know- Well, let me ask a question. Let me- Do we know how many the pharmacies are getting and how that works out? Not, I don't have a specific number. Go ahead, Lauren. So and my I, question is, so if, sorry. if, yes, again, I go back, I'm still, I'm still confused that, and, and if no one, you, you tried to answer it, Matt, so did Carmela, and I'll have to figure out the answer. I'll get my own answer someplace else on this, but I'm still confused. So if we have 
because this is the question, how much is out there? So if there's 16,000 and some is going to Walmart and CVS, and some, we're still doing the phase one, there's still some first responders and nursing homes that are coming out of that number. And there's second doses that are coming out of that number. Once you start adding all that up, you can see that 16,000 gets chopped away pretty quickly, right? But at the CVS and the Walmart sites, are they Walgreens. still the over 75? Is that, yes. are they yes. age restricted there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So if I'm over 70, so currently all the public distribution sites, the CVS, the Walmart, the Med Pods, through the municipalities, that's still, that's all over 65. Okay. Over, 75. 65 or 75. 75. 75. 75. Right right. Right. over 75. 75 or 75. Over 75. That is my question. And it's, but I, just go I think it's Walgreens. That once you start adding up, once you start adding up, you know, those second doses and um, those distributions, you can see the six, fifteen, fourteen thousand 14,000 goes disappears pretty quickly, yes. you know, yeah. real quickly. Yeah. And we're yeah. still yes. in phase one. So, I mean, it does come down to supply. And, you know, this gentleman is correct about asking about the supply. And I've, I, I don't have an answer to that. I don't know how the supply is working. Um, my guess is that there... It, my hope is that there's some national distribution center. Maybe we should put a call over to White House and find out how that's working. Maybe that's another avenue for us, just just to get information for you folks. So that, you know, we right. hear your concerns. I mean, there's two different issues. There's the distribution plan itself, which some people are very unhappy with, and then there's the actual supply. Um, and they're sort of colliding, I think, a little bit. For sure. That's my takeaway. And that's how I have felt for the past three to four weeks. Right. Terry, you could do lots of math. Yes. This, is, uh, this is iPad again. You lots of yes. math. <laughs> uh, but I think it, you know, it, it, seems, it seems to me if, if you adjust for that 71% that they talk about people wanting to do it you know, on, on, on the, the latest polls, um, uh, that, 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 that's, that, that, that means about a five month rollout before they even finish the 75 plus in Portsmouth. Exactly. Okay. Right. And, and, yeah. and, 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 you, and it could go out to a full year. Um, one of the things that I've observed, and all of this is anecdotal, I mean, we have a lot of friends all over the country, and I, I think in one of my notes to you, I, I, there are six or seven different states where people are, where there's sign-up sites and people getting vaccinated well. Everybody that I know is in my age cohort, which is below 75, um, uh, have been vaccinated, and, and some are getting, have gotten their full doses. Um, and so, so you see that differential between the, those states and here. And you wonder, what are they doing right? Does anybody, I have two questions. One, is there any best practices going on uh, around the country to see whether we can do things better? The one that comes to top of mind for me is to end this arbitrary break at 75. Now, I'm talking my book. I understand that. I'm conflicted. But, but you know, at 74 and a half, it's very noticeable for me. But uh, most states that I've talked to, the people that have gotten there, they do not have a break at 75. It goes down to either 60 or 65. And it's first come, first serve. So, so yes, you've got to be a citizen that's engaged to get the vaccine, but you don't have these artificial breaks. Um, and and I, I think that makes it more simple, a lot simpler to manage. Uh, here, you, it's all, think about the time we spent about managing those, those breaks, which are totally arbitrary. Um, and, and, and the only thing that's certain is that over age 65, the chances of dying from this disease skyrocket. And, and that's, that's how most states have organized themselves. I think Rhode Island ought to consider that. So I don't know who I tell that to, but and I'm going to I'm going to uh, iPad's going to going to shut up now because I've asked too many questions. Uh, I don't agree with your analysis in terms of the other states. The other states are making appointments based on the age breaks. They're allowing people to call in and get appointments, but it's still the age breaks that are critical. And after spending hours on the phone trying to get a pharmacy appointment, 75 and over is a pretty uh, tough uh, area to even get an appointment right now. So My point was that the, a lot of other states that I know about, the age break is much lower. It's, 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 they're treating everybody in the, in the risk cohorts. That's not been my analysis. Okay. All right. Well, um, our hours come and gone. And um, <laughs> I think Lauren Carson and I are very, we have absorbed all your frustration. Um, I want to thank Matthew for being here and for um, for Cheryl coming on. If you can follow up with us, that'd be so greatly appreciated. And um, I, I appreciate you showing up at a moment's notice with Neil's um, uh, time <laughs> away. 
Um, thanks very much. And thanks. And yeah, I wanted to make sure that people knew that I was paying attention throughout. I'm looking down, I'm taking pictures because I want to make sure that, the, I, you know, so I don't want you to think I'm, I'm, I'm my mind wasn't on. No, I know. I, I, I was I felt watching bad. your like notes. Looking down and I must be wondering, oh, what is she doing here? Yeah. So no, I wanted no. to be clear with you what I was doing at that time. Thank you Thank very you. much. I thanks to carmela thank you carmela thank, carmela. Yes, thank, thank you, you for carmela. your all your information carmela that's super valuable mm -hmm. to help us my um, pleasure matt you and i make a great team <laughs> you do. i look you do. forward to working Excellent. with you carmela <laughs> so thank, thank you thanks to all thanks to all for stepping into the breach it was very helpful thank you it's our job thank you thank you all for being with us and we'll be in a, touch have terry, a good day we terry will, will be up. in touch we'll be in touch yes absolutely Terry, stay on. Why don't you stay on yeah. a minute? Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Everyone be safe. Take care of yourself. Thank you for having me. Yes, and thank you for having me and the Department of Health. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. I'll, get, thank I'll you. get back to you very shortly uh, with a list of what I think were the questions. Excellent. Bye -bye. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, Carmela. I really appreciate you being here. It was very helpful. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Tia. No problem. He's great. He, he's He's just a great guy. He works yes. three for hours and he has three little kids. <laughs> Absolutely. He was very good. And John, I don't know if you're still on, but I see your face. I'm going to call you within the next hour and talk to you about that bill you wanted me to introduce. I see John's face on the bottom there. Yeah. So again, thanks. Thanks so thanks a lot so much for making me part of your group. And oh, of course. Us. 